Hello everyone, it's Foo here, and today I'm going to be talking about the walking, tap dancing meme himself, Mr. Mime. Before you evolve your Mr. Mime into Mr. Rhyme, watch this video to see why I think that Mr. Mime is actually superior in certain battles, and I've even got a team to prove it, so definitely stay tuned for that. Mr. Mime and Mr. Rhyme are psychic ice types compared to the normal Mr. Mime, which is psychic fairy types. The Galarian form has got this ice typing, which is really neat. They've also got some different moves to use, and a signature ability in screen cleaner which negates the effects of light screen aurora veil and reflect on both your side and the opponent's side of the field which is a really neat ability obviously it means you can't use them with reflect light screen and aurora veil but that's fine because actually negating the opponent's screens is really really useful and a really neat ability to have in terms of stats Mr. Mime is slightly less powerful, but slightly faster than normal Mr. Mime. Mr. Rhyme, however, is a lot bulkier and actually even more powerful, but crucially, it's slower. So why is Galarian Mr. Mime better than Mr. Rhyme in certain situations? Well, it's all down to the fact that they get the move freeze dry, but Mr. Mime's base 100 speed tier is so good because it lets it outspeed really important offensive Pokemon in the VGC format at the moment, which is the official doubles format. I'm talking about some of the rain threats, things like Pelipper, Seismitoad and Ludicolo, all are four times weak to freeze dry. It's an ice type move, super effective against water types. And with their secondary typings, that means that they're four times weak to freeze dry and it can outspeed and one hit KO them. But more importantly than those three examples, it Oko's Gyarados, which is an extremely powerful Pokemon. So if your team's a little bit weak to Gyarados, and let's face it, which team is not a little bit weak to Gyarados, then Mr. Mime is a great solution to that. And also the beast that was unleashed onto the world by Mr. Wolf Glick himself, Dracovish. This terrifying dragon with its fishiest rend move decimates teams, but a swift freeze dry to the face from Mr. Mime will one hit KO it. So all of these examples are Pokemon that are four times weak to freeze dry. They're all very prevalent in the VGC meta at the moment, and Mr. Mime outspeeds them all and can take them out with freeze dry. So that's amazing. And that's why it's better than Mr. Rhyme, because Mr. Rhyme is slower than pretty much all of them. Is that the only reason why Mr. Mime is good though? Just using this freeze dry attack? Definitely not. It does get access to fake out. And again, with its speed tier, it's one of the fastest fake outs in the meta at the moment. So even if your opponent has fake out, your fake out will go first, which is great. On top of that, it's got some great support moves, things like taunt, encore, tickle, as well as speed control in icy wind and trick room and other attacks that it can use like its psychic type attacks or even focus blast, which has a good matchup against sand teams. But I also quite like using Protect because this Pokemon is relatively frail and people like to attack into it. So it's quite good at misdirecting attacks that way. But anyway, that's enough of the theory. Let's get into the battles where I can demonstrate what this Pokemon can do. So this first battle really demonstrates the threat that is Mr. Mime. And we're going up against a Gyarados and a Komoo, which is a fantastic lead matchup because I have the freeze dry for the Gyarados. I have Corviknight in against the Komoo, which has the Brave Bird. So that will do so much damage to the opponent. I've also got mirror armor for intimidate But you can see here that the opponent acknowledges that they're just gonna lose to mr. Mime and run and they run away from the start So that's fantastic <laughs> But here is a bit more of a substantial Example although I do say only a little bit because this was one of the fastest Wi-Fi battles I've had and this was against a rain team now this This team has such a good matchup against rain teams because of freeze dry I do actually like having um, an extra fake outer on the team because it allows Mr. Mime, rather than being a fake outer itself, it allows Mr. Mime to be an offensive threat. So you can see here, my Scrafty can fake out Pink Urchin, presumably there for the Lightning Rod to misdirect attacks away from Pelipper. But I don't need electric type attacks to take on Pelipper because I've got the freeze dry, which is four times super effective and does exactly the same job. So the opponent's really gonna struggle with that. They can bring in the Rain Sweeper here, but because I had the fake out support last time, I still have my Focus Sash intact. So I can take that liquidation from the Seismitoad and then just KO it straight back with the freeze dry. And the opponent has lost two of their crucial Rain components so, so quickly because of freeze dry. And I've also got, I've got my Scrafty here that can go for the close combat. I know that it'll take out the Pink Urchin having seen the fake out damage from the previous turn. So that's amazing. The, the opponent's last Pokemon is going to be uh, Barascuda and 
He, uh, we've got our tap dancing Mr. Mime. Can I just say how awesome it is that Mr. Mime tap dances to the music, which is fantastic. But I'm just going to protect. We don't want Mr. Mime to miss out on the last KO of this battle. So we'll protect this turn and Scrafty can finish off the battle with a close combat because the misdirection with protect is amazing. People acknowledge that Mr. Mime is a threat later in the battle. They'll try to attack it, but you can protect and get your free attacks off with your partner, which is so good. Anyway, this last battle here is an interesting one because it really showcases the versatility of Mr. Mime. It's not just a freeze-dry attacker. It provides more support to the team in kind of fake-out support and speed control too. So anyway, this, po this person had a Dracovish in team matchup, which is why I brought Mr. Mime in the first place. They don't lead with it. I don't know if they brought it in the back, but I know that Mr. Mime is my best way of taking it out. So if they do have it... I kind of want to preserve Mr. Mime for it. On the first turn, because I've got the Focus Sash and I've got the Fake Out, I know that I'm pretty safe just going for a Fake Out and attacking with my Corviknight. If you haven't seen this combination before, Elder Goss and Malamar, really interesting, and the opponent plays it pretty well. Because of the Cotton Down, when Elder Goss is attacked by anything, it means that all the other Pokemon get their speed reduced. And because Malamar has the contrary ability, it actually gets a speed boost from that. So in that first turn, we saw Malamar get a speed boost and it got charmed, so it got plus two attack as well. So this Malamar is now looking like a massive threat and they've Dynamaxed it, which is terrifying. Now on this first turn, seeing as though I still have my focus sash, I want to damage control a little bit. So I'm gonna go for the Thunder Wave onto the Malamar, make sure that it's the speed is controlled. Everything on my team will still outspeed it despite any cotton down drops and uh, and that will be really important. We also see a big problem here because of my mirror armor. Malamar's getting even more boosts, so it's getting like um, special defense boosts as well. This is getting pretty scary. I'm taken down to my Sash with Max Darkness, but I do survive and I do want to save my Mr. Mime for later because Dracovish could still be a problem. So I'm gonna switch in my uh, Rotom and I know that if I Gigantamax my Corviknight I can go for Max Steel Spike that will allow me to get a plus one defense on both Corviknight and the incoming Rotom so though Malamar does at this stage have plus two attack from the charm getting the extra defense means that my Rotom should be able to live any hits so that will be really important so I can go for the Max Steel Spike here it actually doesn't do that much damage to Malamar. Um, I don't think Malamar has any defense boosts at this stage, so it must just be a very defensive Malamar. I don't think it's got any speed investment, which is probably why it was so slow on that first turn. Um, but then it goes for another Max Darkness. As you can see, Rotom does just about survive. That does tons of damage, though. It's really scary. And we're just giving it more and more special defense boosts, so Rotom won't be doing too much damage to it either. Not ideal. Fortunately, I have the berry, so I'll be able to recover some health here. And on this following turn, oh yeah, in the meantime, Pollen Puff on the Malamar, so it's getting recovery and stat buffs, and it's looking very, very scary. Fortunately, not too much longer to wait until its Dynamax is worn off. So I'm gonna protect with Rotom here. I know I'll get another Steel Spike off before it can attack, which will allow my Rotom's defense to get increased again. So even if Rotom is targeted with a Max Darkness this turn, um, even through the Protect, I'll definitely be able to survive. So that was the idea. But Mr. Mime pulls through because the Paralysis means that um, Malamar loses a Dynamax turn, which is amazing. It does get healed again with the Pollen Puff. Not great, but the Dynamax has worn off and now I'll be doing a lot more damage with my Max Moves from Corviknight, although um, any attacks from Rotom won't be too, too much damage. I do just take Elder Goss out here the following turn and it does mean more stat boosts to Malamar, but at this stage, because it's paralyzed, I think it's only at neutral speed now, so the speed it was at the start, and it seemed to be quite slow, so both my Pokemon should outspeed it, especially seeing as though I'm going for a max airstream here. Doesn't quite take out the Malamar, which is so frustrating, because it's still threatening, but I do get all my speed boosts on my Pokemon, so whatever they bring in next, I should be able to outspeed it. Um, and they go for the superpower here. It actually doesn't take out the Rotom, which is fantastic. After all the defense boosts, that's really, really good. Anyway, Fabable comes in now. So it's not Dracovish there. They've got one more in the back. Don't know what that is yet. Um, but we're looking okay because we should be able to take out 
this Clefable with the Iron Head. Apart from we don't, it just survives. It's not even Focus Sash. I don't know if that's amazing, like, EV spread that they have that will guarantee their survival. I, I have a feeling it was just a roll that went in their favor. But I guess that's fair enough, seeing as though um, they got paralyzed with their Malamar. So they're able to take out my Corviknight, which was so important for taking down this Clefable. And now I get to send in my Mr. Mime. What is their last Pokemon? Turns out it's a Dracovish, which is fantastic, because that's why I saved Mr. Mime. So I feel very vindicated right now but it's actually Scarf. Fortunately, they make the massive mistake of targeting the Rotom, not realizing that Mr. Mime is the true threat in this situation because I can freeze dry and one hit KO the Dracovish. So this, this battle is really, really close now. They've only got their Clefable left, but it has Moonlight, so it's gonna heal up. That's not ideal. If my Mr. Mime had Encore right now, that would have been the end of the game. Unfortunately, it doesn't but I do still have my last Pokemon, which is going to be Dragapult. And because both of my Pokemon are out of speed, this Clefable, I'm pretty sure that will be able to do enough damage to be able to take it out. So that's exactly what happened. It's actually Dragapult that finishes off this battle for me. Mr. Mime just doing his little dance at the end there. I can't imagine how humiliating it will feel just having that Mr. Mime staring you down at the end of a battle. But I'm so glad that this Mr. Mime team works. You can try it out for yourself if you want. Really, really fun Pokemon. That's going to be all from me for today. If you enjoyed, please consider leaving a like and subscribing to the channel. I've been Fu, you've been awesome, and hopefully see you next time. Goodbye.